Well, a very good afternoon and welcome back to the Junior World Championships here in Planica, Slovenia, the venue for last year's Senior World Championships. And uh, once again, we've got stunning conditions, maybe a little bit warmer than many of the teams would have wanted, but it was down well below freezing last night. The tracks are hard at the moment. And if yesterday is anything to go by, there will be one or two tumbles. It's the sprints coming up shortly. And we're through from the juniors yesterday, the under 23s in action today. And it's exactly the same format as we see in the World Cups. Top 30 from qualifying go through to the knockout phases. That phase has already been completed. And I think uh, the Norwegians will be happy that in the women's event, Maria Hartz Melling has made it to number one spot. Uh, but I would say from yesterday, you don't need to pay too much attention to, the, to, to their qualifying position provided they made it in the top 30 we saw number 27 in the men's going for the silver yesterday and i think uh, i think he may well have got uh, the gold uh, had uh, had anton Graham not had to work so hard in that first heat well there you see the uh, the course uh, details just over 1200 meters long it's a brutal brutal course with a, a, a very fast right hander about 30 seconds after the start uh, then they have a sweeping downhill left turn after a little climb, which leads them into the longest climb of the race. So important to be in touch at the top of there. And then uh, it's anyone's guess who's going to win if uh, that is the case. The air temperature at nine degrees. Uh, I said a little bit warm. It is far too warm, really. Uh, but we've only got a week of racing. They've laid down a mass of artificial snow in preparation for these championships. So I don't see any issue there. They were well practiced from last year. If you were with us at the World Championships last year, you'll uh, remember just how soft, how tricky it was. All sorts of problems, particularly in the sprint events. Uh, Sundling and Klabo, the two winners in uh, that. You can see the ski jumps in the background and Planica famed for its ski jumping. They've had some huge successes over the years. Number 30 there is Hoffman from Germany. And the athletes from the first of the five heats just about ready to go. Good to see a few more spectators today. It was a little bit quiet yesterday, but I think the word has spread that there's some good racing to be seen. And uh, yeah, really, really impressive yesterday. A little bit of history with Gina Del Rio of Andorra coming through to win Andorra's first ever cross-country skiing international gold. And she made it look easy on top of that. Uh, absolutely toasted Samantha Smith and uh, Mila Andreessen. She was the best by a long, long way. Her form impeccable all the way through the competition. Uh, won the qualifying, won a heat, won the semi, won the final. Job done. Great stuff. Gold medal for Andorra. And uh, I think a lot of people very, very happy to see that. Now, the times that they were recording, the junior women coming in at around 2.38. I'd be surprised if we get much below 235, but uh, the first runs could be quick because you can hear that uh, it's still pretty firm out there in the shade. It is going to soften up rapidly because that thermometer is uh, going up like uh, a SpaceX rocket at the moment. And it's uh, a little bit of a concern as long as we stay under the sort of 15 degrees mark. Uh, the area of the course in the wood will be OK, but there's quite a lot of open uh, open track as well particularly the last bit into the stadium as we have a look at the qualifying results uh, Gaspar Rousset of France the last to qualify in the men's event but the women go first we'll have their first uh, they call them quarterfinals but there are five of them I know it's a bit of an anomaly but uh, that's the way it is so 30 athletes through to the first round top two go through from each heat and then, as I'm sure you're aware, the fastest two lucky losers. Let's have a look at the uh, the athletes. There's Melling of Norway, the fastest qualifier. She won uh, the Norwegian selection races. I think she is after a haul of medals. Next door to her is uh, Henriksen of Sweden, Ellen Henriksen. Furstenberg for Germany, looking pretty relaxed. Finished 11th in the uh, qualification run. 
not that far off Henriksen. So those two could have a battle. Gagnon. Number 30 is Helen Hoffman for Germany. So two Germans in this first heat. Uh, they've got two in heat three as well. And Germany, yeah, that, that's slightly strange. They've gone for two in heat one, two in heat three. Well, that's a very, very slow start from uh, Henriksen, the Swede in the middle. Um, was she caught napping or was it a deliberately below max effort to save something for later on? Keep an eye on her. As I mentioned, she was top 10 in uh, qualifying. She showed some really good form in uh, Farland. Slightly surprised she's in the sunny part of the course and on the inside of the turn. That's going to be difficult to negotiate that first tur turn, but she's made it. Drifts wide. Uh, yeah, slightly surprised. Those look like beginner errors to me. You want to be looking for the track that is in the shade. That's where it's hardest. That's where it's firmest. And that is where it's fastest. Well, there's the long sweeping left-hand turn that I was talking about. It really is pretty treacherous here in Planitza. But everyone's safely through. I think we lost three in the first heat of the junior women's yesterday. Um, so things improving. They would have been working on that particular bit of the track overnight just to make sure that the skis get some traction. This is where the long climb starts. It's about 150 meters up to the bridges. They go under, then a 90 degree left-hand turn, continue to climb a little bit steeper. And it's when you reach the top of that climb that you have to make sure you're within five or six meters of the race leader. And at the moment, that uh, applies to everyone except for Henriksen, who still looks to be struggling. It's like she's trodden on some clister before the start of the race. The skis just are not running as well as everyone else. She's going to struggle to come through from this. So leading the way for Norway is Melling, uh, wearing bib number one, the fastest qualifier, controlling this race pretty comfortably so far. Uh, we've got Coupa of France right on her shoulder. She's done well, qualified in 21st position and looks good at the moment. Round the tight left-hand turn, two minutes on the clock. Remember, we're expecting a time of around 2.35, maybe a fraction quicker. They've got to come up uh, another 50 metres or so, and then it starts to flatten. And luckily for them, there's a little drop down into the finishing straight. And Melink just turns it on. This is about finishing in the top two with as little effort as possible. Needs to be a little bit wary. Furstenberg of Germany starting to make a move on the outside. Now Melling has to up the work rate, but I think she's got this one under control. Good run from her. Melling gets it. Gagnon in second. Photo for Furstenberg and Hoffman. And Coupa of France, uh, three and a half seconds down. Henriksen never at the races today. What on earth was going on there? Very, very surprised because she was pretty impressive in qualifying earlier on. And as I said, we saw some really good racing from her up in Falun in Sweden uh, just about, what, 10 days ago, two weeks ago. Well, there's the first corner. Um, everyone's safely round this time. Melling goes through Gagnon uh, really good run from the Canadian Lillian Gagnon only 0.18 outside safely in Furstenberg will have to wait and see whether a 236.19 is good enough but uh, Melling I think very very controlled performance uh, keep an eye on her Maria Hartz Melling who uh, was 15 in the World Cup in Goms uh, a couple of weeks back. First time that the FAS World Cup Tour has ever been to Goms. Well, here are some of the athletes from the second heat. Magdalena Schertz of Austria. Are the Austrians about to produce uh, another world-beating female? Estonia with Heidi Kasiku. Kajan Sinko for Finland. The 
for a few tongue twisters of names in here. Clemence Didier Laurent for France. And uh, <laughs> I think the uh, stadium announcer has come from uh, the latest boxing bout in Bled, to be honest. Nadine Laurent, just in case you didn't pick it up, wearing number seven. And then uh, Haley Brewster of USA, you will have seen, who was the fastest qualifier in this heat. Uh, and the top two will go through to join Melling and Gagnon in the first of the semi-finals. No problem with the start. We saw, what was it, two or three full starts yesterday, which just unnerves those in the top six. And again, we've got a really slow start in the middle. Just, uh, I think it's the Finnish athlete who's at the back. That's uh, Kan Sinko. Just check up on that. Here we go to the first corner. And uh, yeah, if you, oh, there's our first spiller of the day. And the weight distribution all wrong just spun out of that one you have to stay well balanced on the ski and uh, it's more of a step turn than a carve turn quick recovery quick recovery but uh, it is very very seldom that you see someone go down and still contend for a top two I don't think that is going to happen we've still only got five in there uh, I think it was the Finn Kain Sinko, who uh, has, has crashed out of this one. Well, let's focus on those who are still in the running. Group of five contesting this one at the moment, but this is just about the point that uh, the stronger athletes manage to make their mark and break away. Under the bridge, Laurent ahead of Schertz. Kasuku of Estonia is there. Didier Laurent at 1.1. Brewster of USA, who was the uh, fastest qualifier, remember, in this heat. Uh, not that that means too much, because I think the more experienced athletes were really trying to conserve in that uh, first phase of the sprint competition. They saw it being done effectively yesterday. Uh, and I would be surprised. It's uh, Melling who won it easily. Uh, I think uh, she is definitely a potential winner, but I think there are three or four athletes in the top five or six who uh, really pushed a little bit too hard. Well, that's a good burst of speed from Didier Laurent. Still some way to go as they come down into the stadium now, another 150 meters, uh, and this is going to be uh, a, a comfortable victory so Nadine Laurent taking the win 2.36.10 the time that heat just a fraction slower than the first one and here comes uh, Kian Sinko of Finland crashed out on that first corner. She'll be angry with that. She was right on the uh, inside line, I think, uh, as she went in that. We'll get another look. Keep an eye on her. Wearing bib number 17. It was a slow start as well. Well, there's the reason for the slow start. Just uh, a trip at the at the beginning. Estonian on the inside, actually. Kian Sinko was uh, reasonably well placed. Uh, but I think the pr main problem there, as we see uh, number 14, that was from the previous heat, actually. That was uh, Didier, Clor Didier Laurent uh, just spinning out, and that uh, is why she finished down in fifth. I think she uh, could have been very, very close to the top two had that not happened. So uh, a few incidents already uh, as we have uh, a look at the uh, results of that second heat, Laurent, Schertz, Brewster, Kaisuka, Dilly de Laurent, and uh, Kian Sinko uh, with the two qualifiers, Laurent and Schertz. So uh, Italy and Austria.
have got uh, athletes into the semi-finals. Good stuff. Will Poland be able to do it in heat number three? Monica Skinder's going to have her work cut out, I think. 25, Tanheimer, and just in case, I don't expect for a minute that you're new to cross-country skiing, but just in case you are, the bib number correlates to where they finished in qualification. And uh, Veit of Germany was the fourth fastest qualifier from this third heat. Annabelle Needham from USA. The USA delighted with their silver medal yesterday. Samantha Smith, absolutely fantastic. Couldn't contend with Gina Del Rio, but uh, I thought she was very strong and uh, definitely uh, taking a few technique tips and, and attitude tips and uh, tactical tips, I think, from the great Jess Diggins. So heat three. Via of France, Albrecht of Norway wearing six. 15 is Needham of USA. Veit of Germany alongside her teammate Tanheimer. They're in 16 and 25 respectively. And then Monica Skinder of Poland uh, wearing number 26. And a decent start from Skinder comes across, wants to control the pace down through the first turn. But so does Albrecht of Norway. And the Norwegian on this occasion just edges ahead. So it's Albrecht leading. Skinder in two, and uh, I think that must be Vire in three at the moment. Are we all going to get round the first corner? Oh, that was uh, a little bit uh, dicey. 25 is Tanheimer, back in fifth at the moment. The American Needham, well, she's, uh, she's still there. She's still there, but uh, does not want the leaders to get more than five or six metres clear. Now the hard work starts. Needham having to put the brakes on. That's just what you don't want. There's always a bit of a concertina effect uh, when you reach either the bottom of the downhill or the start of the uphill. And those at the back suffer most. They have to decelerate the most, then accelerate the most. It's uh, probably the least efficient place to be. Added to that. If someone goes down, uh, you're not really in a brilliant position. So Vire of France now dictating the pace. Uh, Albrecht, who pushed very hard out of the start, I think probably going through a recovery phase at the moment. So they've got a long, long left-hand turn. It starts with some uphill. Then uh, once they reach the apex of the climb, it's... Uh, a 20-second rest at most, but it is quite a sharp left-hand turn. There you can see Vire just uh, approaching that section at the moment. Albrecht still in two. Vite of Germany moved up in the three. Needham is there for USA as well. And uh, Skinder is the athlete that has dropped out the pole. Just over the 120 meter to go. Via still keeping the pace going. She's looking very, very good at the moment. And it looks as though America are going to lose Annabelle Needham. She's back in five now. This is between Via and Albrecht. Top two, that's all that matters. Uh, and Germany, I think, Verena Veit, I think it is, trying to squeeze in there. It is Veit. Tanheimer of Germany back in four. And so Vire takes the win, Albrecht two, those two safely through. Vite with a time of 2.34.97 goes into a lucky loser position, as does Germana Tanheimer. So the two Germans have to sit in the lucky loser pool for now with two heats still remaining. Messi out of the start. It's not a massive amount of space. The first 100 metres or so is uh, a double polling race and then you're allowed to skate. And uh, it's just making sure that you've got a little bit of space for those first few steps. Tight between the top three and then a decent gap back down to Tanheimer, who I think will be lucky to go through Thank 
Nina Seaman from USA. Nadia Kailin. Next of the Swiss athletes. They've got two more athletes coming. Kailin and Weber going in the last heat. Both of them very, very strong athletes. So they've got uh, certainly got a good chance of uh, getting some semi-finalists in today's race. Now, second fastest in qualifying, Nia Mella for uh, Finland certainly expected to go through 21st in the Ruka World Cup Ruka pretty much always the first World Cup of the season uh, and she was on good form up there Sarah Hutter for Italy who comes from Laza see how she goes um, only did the 10 and the 20ks in the Junior World Championships last year this year putting the sprint into her program the six are away heat number four and uh, top two will go through to semi-final number two so who's going to pinch pole position as they come out Talib Brun uh, Breding of Norway looks to have stayed lowest longest uh, and that's how you generate the power just as in sprinting and uh, a good start from her. Canada with Sonia Smith. Nina Seaman of uh, USA wearing bib number 22. She's at the back at the moment. Well, that's a, a stiff pace being set by Breding of Norway. Little bit of Niemela just uh, trying to go round on the outside. One ten on the clock. Two thirty-four, the fastest time so far. Well, there's your. Top six, quite nice to get splits on a sprint event. That's uh, pretty new in terms of the technology uh, and certainly helps when the uh, bib numbers aren't clearly visible. And Breading now back down into fourth position. The Emela, who uh, was the quickest um, qualifier by a decent margin, is the one who's starting to pull away. She's got a, herself a little bit of uh, clean snow behind. Uh, sitting in second place at the moment. He's trying to pick up, is that uh, Vite going through? So Niemela is uh, leading at the moment. She's certainly going to qualify in this one. I can't see her getting caught in the last few uh, metres. Breading is trying to make a move. It's a good good effort from her, but I think she's running out of time. Yes, she is. 2.33, 2.34 uh, on the clock. So he could well get a lucky loser from this group. Breading, I think, is quick enough to go into that bracket. And a photo between Hutter and Kaylin in the end. Uh, but uh, well done to Schmidt. She did really well. Sonia Schmidt, a Canada, complete surprise. Ranked number 29 in terms of qualifying. Uh, she stormed that one. Certainly took me by surprise. So well done to Sonia Smith. Great work from her. Uh, 2.34.10, the qualifying time. Uh, could be a bad sign for the semi-finals, but let's hope not. The Canadians suit the black and red. I think uh, Niemela of Finland probably easing up in the closing stages. We should get to see that. You can judge for yourself. Niemela on the left, just looking around. Yeah, it's an easy, easy run from her. Knew she had it in the bag. Uh, wasn't too fussed that Sonja Schmidt of Canada came past. So a 2.34.10. Uh, third place to Breading in 2.34.6. That, uh, for me, is good enough. The quickest lucky loser at the moment. That's always important. And Verena Veit of Germany, a 2.34.97 uh, from the previous heat, is still in a lucky loser slot as well, with only one to go. Let's have a look at the uh, athletes for this.
Cook and Leto of Finland wearing 28. Alongside her, Sigrid Leseth Foyen for Norway. 13 is Anja Weber, a triathlete and a cross country skier. She's in the, I think she's just about number 150 in the world in terms of triathlon, but takes both sports very seriously. And uh, of course, uh, got medals at the Junior World Championships back in 22. Rosenberg also there for Sweden. This is uh, Marina Kailin of Switzerland, who's the fastest, comes from Samaritz. Uh, we saw her racing in Goms, finished down 19th. You just missed out on the uh, semi-finals on that occasion. And then uh, Moa Hansen of Sweden, who comes from Falun, which of course is the sort of the venue for their world championships and most of their world cups. Although Ostersen getting used more and more regularly. So we're underway. The fifth and final quarterfinal for the women's under 23 sprint. And if that is a callback, that's probably the latest callback we've ever seen. Not quite sure what that was about. So 2.34 is the target time. That's better. The crowd goes silent. Always a little bit nervy. Two Swedes, two Swiss, one Norwegian, one Finn. Sweden, the dominant nation in world sprinting for five or six years now. Ever since, uh, well, probably near a decade, isn't it? Since Bjorgen disappeared and uh, Majdic, athletes that used to dominate the shortest event. I can think of many an athlete who would say 1,200 meters plus is not a sprint, uh, but it is in cross-country terms. Interesting to hear some of the physiologists talk about it. They all feel that it's it's actually three sprints in one race, the sprint off the start, uh, just to make sure you get into a decent position, don't get left behind. Then there's always a burst of speed, usually coming up to the top of the, the high point of the course, because you just do not want to be too far behind. If you're 10 metres behind going up the hill, by the time you go over the crest, you find yourself 20, 25 metres behind. Uh, and that's a big psychological blow. And then, of course, there's a third and final sprint when they come into the home straight. Unless, of course, you've done enough work just to be able to cruise in. So the fifth heat finally underway. Just a reminder, we've got Kylin and Weber from uh, Switzerland wearing 3 and 13 respectively. Rosenberg and Hansen from Sweden, uh, 8 and 18 their net numbers. Rosenberg wearing 8. And then Norway with Sigrid Leseth Foyen wearing 23, who's uh, leading at the moment. That seems to have been the Norwegian's brief. Get out front just to make sure you get round this first corner. Any fallers? We've only had one so far today. And uh, cleanly through. Foyen looking strong. 23rd in qualifying, I wouldn't expect too much. There are some very, very strong athletes in there. Rosenberg for one. Moa Hansen, very experienced, wearing 18. Uh, I think that's, I think Hansen just back, yeah, back in around fourth, fifth place at the moment. And her teammate Rosenberg wearing eight, sitting in third at the moment. So Foyan still leading. How much longer? How much longer will she be allowed to set the pace? I think the Swiss are going to start to make a move. And uh, Marta Rosenberg wearing eight, I think, will do so. She's on the left-hand side of your screen at the moment. And suddenly uh, Anja Weber and Kaylin start to uh, try and muscle their way to the front here in Planitza, the Junior World Championships, in their second day. So it's Weber ahead of Rosenberg. Uh, Foyen pushed down into third. Now four. And going backwards 
at the moment, but if she can stay in touch to the top of this climb, she has still got a chance. That's it, that's the bulk of the hard work done. The last, the last climb takes you up into the finish. So important to try and fill the lungs with oxygen, which is then transported to the muscles. Uh, one of the reasons cross-country skiing, regarded as the hardest sport on the planet, is that so many muscle groups are involved. Keep an eye out for the Swede on the far side. That's a little bit of burst of speed from Moa Hansen, who fancies her chances of getting in there. But this is a wonderful, wonderful run. And Switzerland will be delighted to see this. Marina Kalin, third in qualifying. A really impressive burst of speed. And we may well get two Swiss qualifiers here. It's going to be tight between them. And uh, I think that was uh, Moa Hansen coming through to claim second place. Just ahead of Anja Weber. A 2.35.2. Not quick enough to get a lucky loser. So Anja Weber misses out by a fraction. The triathlete come cross-country skier, that's such an ambitious program. Both brutally hard sports, but um, I guess in triathlon you've got three skills to learn. And cross-country skiing must be one of the most skill-intested, uh, not invested, in uh, skill um, intensive, I think is probably the right word, sports going. The balance has to be impeccable. And the rhythm. Yeah, that'd be an interesting uh, bit of research. Find out which sport requires the most skill. I guess gymnastics is going to be right up there. Uh, sports like swimming and kayaking, it's sort of hidden skill, isn't it? It's what they do under the water that's magic. So there's the uh, result. Kalen, Hansen, Weber, the top three. Uh, but only two going through from that second heat, so we should get the lineup for the semi finals pretty shortly. Melling and Gagnon go from heat one definitely. Lawrence, uh, Laurent and Schertz go from heat two for Italy and Austria. Via and Orbrecht go from uh, heat three, along with Verena Veit as a lucky loser. And Schmidt, Niemela, and Breding and Norway uh, a lucky loser again from heat four. And then just Kalin and Hansen from uh, heat number five. So on now to the... men's event and the athletes for the first heat just being introduced Keck of Germany Humbo of Norway is uh, the number one well he was in qualifying anyway haven't seen him on the World Cup too often. He has done World Cup. He did Draman uh, a couple of years ago, finished 50th on that occasion, so didn't get through to the knockout phases, but he was a pretty young man then, just 19 years old. Uh, there he is, wearing one on the near side. Hombo, Keck, uh, we've got Drem Yuga of Estonia, Arnaud of France, uh, Pitier of Switzerland, and Rousset of France wearing 30, slowest qualifier. And uh, as is often the case, when you've got number one in your heat, uh, most other athletes try and avoid it. Uh, number 10, uh, who you can see there, uh, Keck of Germany. Arnaud is number 20 of France. Is that Arnaud at the back? It is at the moment. So uh, a slow start for Arnaud. And the Swiss trying to make an impression. PTA number 21. Suddenly the pace picks up. 
the quickest time in the women's in the men's uh, expecting to see something around the 215 mark I think uh, so maybe just about a minute to go from here Rousset ahead of the uh, fastest qualifier Hombo who's hitching a lift at the moment but is perfectly positioned to make a move a left hand turn now suddenly Hombo finds himself with a little bit of space he edges up trying to put uh, a little bit of pressure on Keke Germany and uh, Rousset of France uh, excelling himself at the moment. Very, very impressive skiing from him. Dremluka of Estonia in second place. Hombo has been pushed down a one. He's, uh, he's back in 21. He's a really good freestyle skier, Hombo. There he is. Now he starts to make his move. He's got the space he needed. And uh, now it's a battle for second place. Estonia and France uh, sharing it at the moment. But uh, there's no doubt Hombo is going to wrap this one up. Will he ease down? He is. And they're closing. He's still got some 10 metres to go comfortably through. And <laughs> a little bit cocky, some may say. But uh, he knows what he's doing. Rousset in two, Pitié three. And uh, a good run. Norway with... Um, three more athletes still to come they've got two athletes in heat number three and Hombo who looks as though he's been watching one Johannes Husford Klebo who of course is the world's undisputed king of sprinting uh, looking forward to seeing him in action the cross-country tour uh, over in North Amer America next uh, Canmore the next venue and then, of course, uh, they'll head to the United States for a race as well. So it's going to be a, a good uh, final stage of the season for them. Certainly the Americans, uh, Ogden and Sire and Diggins, absolutely delighted to be uh, racing. Um, <laughs> maybe nowhere near their homes, but uh, on that side of the Atlantic. And uh, with home support, that is for sure. And there'll be lots of it if uh, previous races uh, over in North America or anything to go by. Twenty-four, Stern. And uh, he's done well to get through to this stage. Uh, Anze Gross has also made it through from Slovenia. He'll be racing in the next heat. And even better news, uh, Bostan Korosec has uh, made it as well. So uh, the Slovenians have done well in the men's under 23. George Urson there for Sweden. Uh, Emil Danielsson must be one of the favourites uh, in this event. Uh, Danielsson wearing 14. Jon Payo. Fastest qualifier, qualified fourth. And, uh, well, we'll see if Andorra can get a gold medal. Why can't Spain? Their last superstar, of course, uh, the disgraced Johan Muleg. Well, that was a slow-looking start from Kastner. Just wondering whether one of those middle tracks has a different snow makeup in it or something because we've had some extraordinarily slow starts out of that particular lane so full tilt round the first corner and uh, we have gone and lost one of the Swedes was it Urson or was it Danielson it was Urson George Urson has gone down who was top 10 in qualifying that is a big big blow to the Swedish team there's absolutely no way Urson's getting back in touch with this group and uh, Emil Danielson will have to do his best to make up for that it is Danielson that leads at the moment Slovenia in second place with uh, Nez Stern who did well and uh, Danielson I think must have taken out one of the other uh, athletes who is it who's missing we've got Sweden so we've got Antonin Savary Germany are there with Kastner we know that uh, Emil Danielson is there I think John uh, Payu of Spain also going down on that first corner so that's a big big blow to Sweden and Spain 
So Danielson and Stern are there. Kastner at 2.3. It's quite a big gap. It's quite a big gap. And if uh, the two leaders can extend that lead by another five metres or so, they could have a very, very easy run into the finish. Well, this is quite important for the local fans. And I guess uh, the fact that we've got um, quite a few talented Slovenians racing today, why we've seen a, an increase of, what, two, three hundred percent in terms of the crowd numbers. So Emil Danielson still leading. Now the pressure starts to come. And it's uh, Stern of uh, Slovenia still holding on to second place. Germany's Marius Kastner trying to close the gap. He's left it too late. He needed to be in touch at the top of that final climb. Emil Danielson takes it. And Slovenia celebrating. Nez Stern has made it. He punches the air. He's through to the last 12. And when you make the last 12, who knows what might happen. Great work from him. Antonin Savary, the slowest qualifier in that heat, disappointed. And uh, neither Peyu of Spain or George Urson anywhere to be seen. Danielson hands the skis in. Just as it is in the World Cup, uh, the ban on fluorocarbon waxes. Um, there's no point having it a partial ban. It is across the board, any race. Now, this is the bit you're all looking forward to. What went wrong? And it was... Sweden's George Urson who goes down. Yeah, well, I missed, I have to admit, I missed the, uh, I missed the dive by Jean Peyou. He had no choice. <laughs> that, was quite, that was quite spectacular, and there's no way he's getting a yellow card for that. He had no choice. Uh, the only way to j avoid George Urson there was to take to the skies. He did just that. And uh, Urson in the end coming across the line. But I think Payu must have not only broke, uh, well, I just hope he's okay. Uh, sticks and skis don't really matter. They can get more of them. They're not cheap, but they can get some more. But uh, what's important is that he is in one piece. So two runs completed. Fastest time so far, 2.15. 39. No, Naif. Now we saw Naif uh, Junior racing yesterday. Uh, didn't have a particularly good day. I thought he might be heading for medals. It didn't quite turn out that way. Uh, Lars Hagen of Norway, the winner. Gran in second. Lindbergh of Sweden, uh, making it two medals for the Swedes in that uh, junior. World champs. Ansi Gross trying to whip the crowd into some sort of a friendly he frenzy here. Dueling of Canada. Now, the Canadians uh, have already uh, produced some good results in the women's race. Gagnon getting qualified from the first heat of the women's. This is the third heat of the men's, five uh, in total. So two to go after this one. And Ansi Gross, the fastest qualifier, but as we've seen already today, unless you qualified number one, it doesn't really seem to make that much difference. Melling and Hombo, the two athletes to wear bib number one today, and they both look very good. Well, that was a slightly more conservative uh, approach, but still, uh, we saw the... Norwegian Sand, uh, it was Horven actually getting slightly tied up at the back. The Norwegians are wearing 25 and 26. Uh, that's not going to be easy to differentiate. Better to look at the hair colour. And Edward Sandvik is the blonde haired. Horven wearing uh, a headband and he's back in five at the moment, looking for a little bit of space to go through the middle. Switzerland with uh, Noe Naif uh, setting the pace as they come through the half uh, way point through the 600 metres and uh, just over the same distance to go. Under the bridge, the snow a little bit icy under there, but uh, at the end of the day, the moisture does seem to gather because the temperature is getting warmer and warmer here in Planeta. Well, that's a good drive coming in from the American. Hagenbusch and uh, Hagenbusch 
gets himself out front. And Ansi Gross, who went off like a rocket, uh, has just gradually dropped back down the order. He's uh, down in five at the moment. And if the Slovenians won another qualifier, Gross is going to have to start to do something pretty soon. 200 metres to go at the very most. The Canadian dropping off the pace now. Juling, I think, is out of this one. Great skiing from the Americans. Hagenbusch looking very comfortable at the moment. Man from Ketchum in Idaho. And he steals a march on the rest. He has timed this one to perfection. He's going to take the uh, take the lead automatically through to the semi-finals. It's all about second. And uh, it looked as me as though Horvan had it just ahead of the Slovenian Gross, who left it too late. 216.7, not quick enough for lucky losers. We've got two sub six, two sixteens uh, for lucky loser slots at the moment. Well, the eventual winner sitting back in sixth place for the majority of the first half of the race. And uh, there he is, John Steele Hagenbusch. Started to make his move, coming up, uh, coming round the corner, up into the final climb. And he saved plenty for the final stages. A two, three metre lead coming over the high point, And then he was able to ease down Norway's uh, Preben Horven coming in in uh, second place in the end. So those two go through, 216.45 and a 216.58. Two to go. And we will get straight on with it. Up Leitila from Finland. Three Finns in this heat. Here's a man who's going to be tough to beat, Mats William Jensen of Norway. Christian Steiner of Austria. And I think I'm right in saying yes, he's the only Austrian to have made it through to the top 30. Laikari, one of three Finns. Wearing 19, he was the quickest of the Finns in qualifying. Cicchetti for Italy, only 22. Uh, well, it, essentially that means this is his last year in the under-23 Worlds. Comes from Moena. Uh, we saw him do the relay in uh, Oberhof a little bit earlier this season. And he was sixth last year. So Cicchetti, the man to watch. Saw him win a, an Alpen Cup event in Oberwiesenthal recently. So we get away cleanly. And Chiaketti wearing two. He's the tall figure in the middle. Uh, definitely noticeable that with Federico Pellegrino sprinting is where the Italian skiers want to be. It's the glamorous side of the sport. Uh, but they'll have to take note that Pellegrino is getting better and better and better at the distance races as well. Oh, can you believe it? I bigged him up and he's gone down on the first corner. How unusual to see an Italian take a tumble. Generally, they're the best alpine skiers of the lot. But Chiacchetti has gone. The favourite is out. And that really opens the door for the rest of the field. The Edson of Norway will be delighted. He'll feel a little bit sorry, no doubt, for Chiacchetti, but it does make his job easier. He's wearing nine. He's the second fastest of the qualifiers in this heat, but at the moment being roadblocked by two of the Finns, Lykari and Melnitz. 29 at the back is Leitela. I uh, don't think from his qualifying time that he's going to be a threat in this event. Austria's Steiner is still there, but... When it looks as though they're working hard, it's usually an indication that the timing isn't quite right, uh, which generally means that the fatigue has set in. So Finland one and two, Norway in three, Austria in four with Steiner, and Steiner puts in a, a burst. That's a good bit of speed. Now uh, 
Jensen starting to look fairly comfortable. We saw him race in Ruka at the beginning of the year. He finished fourth there. That was a, a fantastic race. He's had four top ten results in World Cup. So he is the class act in this field. And Jensen starting to make a move on the outside. He's got to be a little bit careful because the Finns are on fire. And this is uh, Lakari who's absolutely storming it. They've both gone. They've got a huge, huge gap coming into the last 100 metres. And it's going to be Lykari and Jensen who go through, no doubt about that. And they just ease up on the clock. No lucky losers from this group. They're way outside the 2.14.4 mark. And so Jensen and Lykari can prepare themselves for semi-final number two. I don't think any damage done there to Chiacchetti. Very disappointed because he looks so good in qualifying. Produced the second fastest qualifying time behind Holmbo of Norway. And he'll be a little bit embarrassed by that. Um, he's a much, much better downhill skier than he displayed there. So... Jensen confirmed as the winner of Heat 4. Lagari of Finland is through as well. And they will meet um, Previn Horven. I think he's going to be in um, semi-final number two. He's, he raced in Heat 3. So this is the lineup for the last of the first round heats. Stulben is there for Germany. Walker Hall of USA. He's just watched his teammate Hagenbusch cruise through to the semi-finals from heat number three. Brian Bushy, second of the Americans in this heat. Just 21, eighth in the national championships. Soften really good in qualifying and doesn't carry that through to the latter stages of the competition. We'll see if that is the case today. And Sweden with uh, Morns Skogland. So Bushy and Hall of USA, Skogland of Sweden, Germany with Stolben. We caught Korosec of Slovenia wearing 18 and Selizgash of Spain wearing 28. Now we lost. Uh, the best of the Spaniards, Peo, in heat two. He crashed out on that first corner. Uh, so far, the women faring better than the men on that uh, tricky corner. Men have lost three. So they're underway, and uh, that is definitely a double bleat. They're a little bit quicker this time. Um, sure who it was who uh, is the offender might be one of the Americans it might just oh that is tight or was it was it Skogland on this side for Sweden your call because I certainly didn't pick it up Well, he was pretty rapid with the, uh, I think it might have been Selis Gash. Well, I'm none the wiser, have to be honest. Um, it was either Selis Gash nearest us or it was Sweden Skogland uh, who got the yellow card. It doesn't matter now because they are safely underway. And... Um, We'll just check it out. Is that Walker Hall sitting at the back? Uh, might just have watched his teammate, uh, Hagenbusch, who took, took it very, very slowly to start with. Germany with Stolben and Sellers going well. They all just scrape round that tricky corner. 
Slovenia with uh, Korosec. He's uh, back wearing 18. Bushy, Brian Bushy is the fastest of the qualifiers. He's sitting in fourth position at the moment, just ahead of his uh, teammate Walker Hall. So Germany leading. Nice bit of skiing from them. Spain with Selis Gash in second place. Sweden and Morn Skoglund uh, up there. Just moving up into second, Skoglund now as they start the long, long climb up to the road. And uh, Germany's Jan Stolben absolutely exploding the speed here, trying to make a bit of a lead. But that is an expensive break, and he's he's really only got, what, a couple of metres advantage for all that effort. Wait and see. Has he got anything left for the final stages? Through the 750-metre mark. Just around 400 metres to go from here. Germany ahead of Spain at the moment. Back in third place is Skogland of Sweden, who just looks very, very comfortable on the ski. I don't think he looks too concerned about the lead that the others have, but he's, uh, he's far enough back not to get too much of a benefit from the slipstream. And now he's got to worry about the Americans who look poised to make a move. Germany hoping to get someone through to the semi-finals. Jan Stolben's in a great position with 120 to go. Stolben leads this one, and I think he's going to secure this. It's all about second place. Selis Gash of Spain holding it at the moment. Sweden, Skogland coming hard in the closing stages. Skogland nips to his left. The Americans have been left behind. It's all about second. Watch for the uh, angle. Really good finish from Skogland. If he got that, that is a massive, massive surprise. And a brilliantly just timed uh, sprint for the finish. Just waiting for confirmation of the time. I think it was around 2.15, which once again is not quick enough to get a lucky loser. Or is it? Or is it? We've got a 2.15.7. Well, it may be. We may well get one lucky loser out of that. I think Walker Hall, who was fourth in 2.16.5.6, is out of it. Well, that was the replay of the yellow card. I thought for a nasty moment, it was a second yellow coming. Fastest qualifier, Brian Bushy, sitting right back in those early stages. It's surely safer to be up with the mix. But credit to Stolben of Germany. He went very, very early and he kept the pressure on built just enough of a lead and it was the timing of the lunge from Sweden Skogland that uh, at the moment has got him into the position it has uh, but sell his gash of Spain <laughs> thank goodness for that he goes through three hundredths of a second uh, pushing him down into third place but he goes through as one of the lucky losers So the women's semi-finalists are all ready to go. Nadine Laurent there wearing seven. And there is the, uh, the favorite, Maria Hartz Melling. Very impressed with her. Won the uh, selection races not long ago in Linya. And uh, she was good over the sprints. She was even more impressive in the distance races. Via is there, having qualified in fifth, went in uh, heat three and won that in 234.37. Um, that was the second quickest time. Sonia Smith did a 234.10. Uh, they get away cleanly. So, Melling of Norway is wearing one. Via of France is five. Laurent of Italy is a seven. Those are the three that we're expecting to shine. Uh, but keep an eye on Lillian Gagnon. Absolutely fantastic in the first round. She's in the black and red suit with a few dashes of white in there as well, representing Canada. And Magdalena Schertz of Austria in a, a red suit similar to that 
of the Norwegians. Uh, she's got number 27, whereas Melling has one. And Melling, we expect to be out the front, which is exactly where she is at the moment. And then Varia Veit of Germany, fifth position at the moment, uh, going around this left-hander. I think Veit, to be honest, will be happy to have made it through to the semis, but the opportunity may come. Melling holding court at the moment. The French are ready to put go, as are the Italians with Via and Laurent. Via wearing five for France and uh, Melling in the perfect position. The next corner is a 90 degree left hand turn. Uh, so anyone going past her has got to go the long way round and she'll try and hold off uh, Nadine Laurent for as long as she can. Laurent uh, of Italy just looking over her shoulder wants to get in behind the Norwegian that's a good move but I don't think she was expecting to see uh, Gagnon uh, Canada moving in as well so Melling still leading number seven is Nadine Laurent of Italy looking comfortable Germany with Verena Veit moving up in a third place she's had a very very good last 50 meters and now Mile Via is uh, struggling and Canada's uh, Lillian Gagnon pushed down again, but all five in that front group are in it. I think uh, I think Magdalena Schertz of Austria is going to struggle to get back into contention here. Up the final climb, Melling, who made it look very easy last time, almost in an identical position to her first round as they come into the closing stages. It's number one who leads, Laurent of Italy in second place at the moment. Uh, but there's a lot of pressure coming from behind. And again, it's Lillian Gagnon Akana on the right-hand side of your screen. Can she gain those two metres and move up into the top two? It's very tight for second place. Melling has got this one in the bag. Good racing from her. And I think Veit of Germany uh, coming through on the inside. 237.6, a photo between Laurent and Gagnon. All is not lost at this stage. Two lucky losers from the semi-finals. And uh, still waiting for the official timing, 2.37.58. So that was 2.37.58. Wow, that was three seconds plus slower than the third quarter final. Are they starting to tire or was it a much more tactical race which has opened it up for some of those in the second semi-final? Melling cruising at this stage she's controlled everything she's done so far today and being shown a fair amount of uh, respect by Laurent and Veit Nadine Laurent wearing seven uh, comes from Gressene third in the national championships uh, in Italy that was won by San Filippo who we see uh, often see getting into the semi-finals of World Cups Yeah, Laurent missing out by a fraction, having done a lot of good work. Um, and you can see just how close the times are. Second semi, two Norwegians, uh, Dalibrum Breding, ranked 12 in terms of qualification. Moa Hansen, ranked 18. Do not believe it. She is better than that. She will be a challenger in this uh, second semi, I feel. Albrecht of Norway was uh, strong. It was uh, a decent performance from her. 23rd in the national championships, but if you can get 23rd in the Norwegian nationals, you are pretty good. Marina Kailin of Switzerland wearing 29. So right at the back, just scraped through qualifying and finds herself in the semis. And there's Sonia Schmidt of uh, Canada. Sorry, Schmidt wearing uh, 29. Kylin of Switzerland is wearing number three. That's Niel Niemela of uh, Finland. Really solid first round. Is going to need a bit more power and perfect, perfect tactics if she's going to advance to the last six. Second semi-final, under 23 Junior World Championships. And so many 
athletes from this level go on to shine in terms of the winning. Uh, Jonas Sundling won this title back in 2016, obviously going on to win World Championships and Olympic Games. Til Ludnis Veng, the overall World Cup winner last year, she won this back in 2018. Emma Rebom has won this title as well. And Moa Hansen of Sweden winning this back in 22. And Moa Hansen, of course, in this heat, in the Swedish colours, uh, the white suit over on the far side. So she knows what this is all about. Yasmin Kahara, the winner of this event last year. So things starting to settle down as they go through the one minute mark. Good skiing from uh, Hila Niemelo, the fastest qualifier from this heat. And I think that's given her just a boost of confidence. Uh, but so often the leaders found wanting in the latter stages of the race. Is she going to be able to hold this pace? It's all very tight at the moment. People staying just nicely spread. Breading of uh, Norway, I think that is dropping at the back at the moment. Uh, Niemer leading, all Brecht in two, Kyle in three, Schmidt, Hansen, Bredding, uh, Moa Hansen, work to do, 1.2 seconds off the leaders, but now the crucial part of the race, the final steep climb before they come back up into the stadium, and again an injection of pace from Niemer, that's a really impressive run, and that uh, may well put an end to the chances of some of the big names in this group, namely uh, Moa Hansen of Sweden, who's now back in fifth, and still some 20 20 meters off the leaders a former junior champion struggling at the moment to stay with the pace being set by the Finn so Finland lead with Niemela great work from her a move being made by Albrecht on the inside for Norway and over on the far side for Canada Sonia Schmidt isn't out of this one Beautiful free skating from Sonia Schmidt, and that's going to put her into the pole position. Qualified in 29, she's going to win the second semi final. She's through to the last six. That is worth a celebration, but she'll have none of it. She is going to focus on the big showdown in about 30 minutes' time. Sonia Schmidt takes the win. 234 5. Great racing from her. Wow, that was fantastic. And uh, I think. I think she is the first person to free skate down the last 100 metres. It certainly paid off. Well, I was watching Moa Hansen, expecting to see something. She was well placed initially, didn't make any mistakes, but just didn't have anything to give over the latter stages. The Canadian Schmidt staying very, very low on the downhill sections. Uh, still had work to do at this stage. There she is uh, with the black and the red suit down in third or sharing third and fourth alongside Kaylin of Switzerland, who is one of the fastest. But this is where the difference came. She stays low, doesn't use the poles, gets the aerodynamic position, winds up the leg speed and eases ahead of Niela, uh, Niemela, I should say. Well, I'm struggling with that one so much. 2.34.58, the winning time. That is good. Not quite the fastest we've seen so far today, but very, very close to it. Only two tenths of a second outside heat number three. So Melling, Veit, Schmidt, Niemela, Albrecht and Kalin all go through. Albrecht and Kalin from that second semi going through. So that is good news for Melling. She is in a very strong position, having had slightly more rest than the rest. Here we go then with the men's semi-finals. Gaspar Rousset of France, as you might have guessed. Six is uh, John Steele Hagenbush. Uh, one of the big surprises from his heat. Looked very good. Came in ahead of uh, Preben Horven of Norway. Alexander Elder Holmbo. Yeah, he's, he's a class act, is uh, Holmbo. 
definitely looking over his results definitely better at the freestyle and luckily for him that is the technique being used this year will the time ever come where they have a classic sprint and a freestyle sprint makes it quite difficult to fit it into the program well that's a uh, little bit of uh, a problem there for Stern of Slovenia just being obstructed by uh, Gaspar Rousset of uh, France. Spain's uh, Celes Gash, who's not had a massive amount of time to recover, to be honest. He was in heat five and he's racing in semi final number one. I just don't see how he has recovered enough to be able to put in an all out effort in the semi final. Uh, and at the moment, he's sitting back in sixth place. Holmbo stays low, starting to wind it up. Alongside him is Emil Danielsson, another superstar in the making for Sweden, Danielsson. And uh, he would uh, do himself no harm at all by winning the under-23 World Championships here today. Uh, at the moment, he's in a top two, so he could well be going through to the final, but we've still got 600 metres to go under the road bridge. Then the steepest climb. moment it looks as though four are in it but the local crowd giving uh, Nesh Stern a, a good shout he's the only one of the Slovenians who made it through to the top uh, 12 uh, it would be fantastic for them and Slovenian skiing if he could make the top two here but I don't think that's going to happen he's 20 meters adrift he's only got 120 meters to go it's Norway and Sweden dominating at the moment France trying to get in on the act with Jesper Rousset but Rousset uh, has five meters to make up in the last 80 that's a, a big ask for him especially as uh, Sweden with Emil Danielsson just coming across uh, to make his task that much harder no foul play there at all from Danielson. He had the right to go for that middle lane. So Holmbo gets it. Danielson in two. Rousset struggling in three. 2.59. Hagen Busch uh, was all out in the first round and uh, a 2.16. So a little bit slower than we saw earlier on. And Celis Gash of, of Spain. Uh, understandably way way off the pace that is unlucky to race in heat five and go into semi-final number one he did go through as a lucky loser but um, nonetheless that's uh, a really really tough job this is where the Slovenian just lost touch with that leading group. Nishtern is out. So no local interest in the men's under 23 race now. Pombo and Danielson, the top two, 215.53. Um, that's a respectable time respectable time now the second uh, semi as we saw with the women's we often get four qualifiers from the second semi-final they know the time they're after they know what they've got to do and there will be a couple of athletes in here who know that um, they're not quick enough to win a top two slot but they might be quick enough if they go all out to beat that time of uh, what is it 216.08 if you can beat that you are through to the final unless of course four men finish ahead of you like Kari so Finland Norway Switzerland Sweden Germany there's man Skogland only seems about two minutes ago that he was racing. Again, another athlete from heat number five. Mats William Jensen raced in heat four, won that comfortably and uh, looked pretty easy, to be honest. 
15 World Cups in his career so far. And as I mentioned earlier, a good fourth place up in Ruka at the start of this season. So we're underway. And again, lane three. It's like someone's laid down some super glue in there. That's uh, an extraordinary start from Lekari. We've seen five or six of those. And I don't remember a time that someone has started from heat one. Um, I think he's definitely got an issue. I think he's uh, picked up a new pole. He's bust his pole. That was the issue. Uh, and uh, already some 20 metres back. Now, his only chance, his only chance, provided he stays on his feet, uh, is that it turns into a game of cat and mouse at the front. But we haven't seen any of that so far in these championships. Yeah, always difficult to give um, the spare poles because the strap on the left and the right hands are different. You can wear them, but it's not as comfortable. Uh, and of course, you've got to get one that's exactly the same length. Otherwise, it takes a couple of minutes just to get used to it. You do get used to it, but uh, it's never quite as efficient. So, similar tactic being shown by Jan Stolben. This is where he went in the first round. <laughs> He's going for it again. I doubted the tactics first time. He proved me wrong. Will he do so in the men's semi-final? I would be uh, surprised this time if he can hold off the strength of Jensen and uh, Preben Horven, who were both very strong in the finish. Looking good is uh, Lan Pitier of uh, Switzerland. They're wearing 21. He's still close enough to the leaders. And Sweden's uh, Man Skoglund wearing eight. Preben Horven struggling just a little bit, uh, just looking to see which heat he came from. I think he raced earlier on. Yeah, he was heat three and uh, finished second in that. So into the stadium to decide this one. Mats William Jensen certainly in the top three in terms of favourites. Ninth in qualifying, but he's a really accomplished sprinter and he cruises home. 21, Land Pitier of Switzerland. That is a good performance from him. And the time at 2.15, 2.16, a 2.16.5 for Stolpen. Uh, the lucky loser in the first heat was 2.16.08. So they have missed out. And all four, well, we get four qualifiers from that first semi. So Holmbo and Danielson are through. Rousse and Hagenbusch have made it. Jensen and Pitier. Now, Jensen there, just see him wearing nine. Has he got the time to recover before the men's final? There is only one race between now and then. How easy was that semi? Well, he may have made it look easy, but the expenditure of energy right up there. He didn't have it all his own way, thanks to Jan Stolben of Germany. And all credit to Stolben, he gave, he gave it a go. He used a, a tactic that worked for him, for him in the first round, but each round is different, isn't it? In the first round, there is quite a big differential in speed uh, between the best and the worst. And therefore, you tend to have your own speed, you know who you're watching out for. By the time you get to the semis and the finals, everyone is quick. Well, the ladies are ready to go. And their final lineup decided Albrecht of Norway, one of two Norwegians in this final. In terms of qualifiers, we have one, two, three, and six, 16 and 29. There is number 16. That is Verena Veit of Germany. Plenty of German fans have made the trip to watch these races. Most of the fans here are friends and family of the athlete. So it's a really friendly atmosphere. Sonia Schmidt of Canada, well, she's the outstanding performer of the day so far. I think a big, big surprise to see her, see her doing so well. And uh, the North Americans will be delighted with the way things have started. This is the lady to beat. Maria Hartz-Melling, 
very, very quick indeed. Niemela. So, Melling wearing one. Two is Niemela of Finland. Three is Kylan. Six is Albrecht of Norway. 16 is Veit of Germany. And Sonja Schmidt of Canada wearing bib number 29. So, so close to getting knocked out in the qualifying round. But since then, she has looked better and better with each round. And she's got a very, very quick finish over the last 150. So keep your eye out for her. No surprise to see Melling take the lead. She's done that all day confidently. Maybe watching Gina Del Rio yesterday in the uh, junior event. Del Rio, of course, the first Andorran ever to win an international cross-country ski race for the Andorans. Uh, it seems extraordinary because they get decent conditions. They've got plenty of altitude to train at. But uh, cross-country is not the focus. It's all about alpine skiing there. But uh, well done to Del Rio. Really brought a big smile to the stadium here in Planitza yesterday. And uh, she was so composed. Absolutely no sign of fatigue in terms of her technique all the way through the race. So all six still in the race. And Sonia schmidt of canada sitting at the back but don't be too concerned it's about now that she starts to turn it up and moves to the front of the field melling certainly pushing harder this time than she did in the previous two rounds trying to shake off the presence of niemela of finland who's sitting there in second looks as though it could be between the norwegian and the finn for the gold medal but uh, we're still there. Sonja Schmidt's moved up in the third, gliding nicely, and now in a very, very good position to attack on this final bit of climbing. So Norway ahead of Finland. Canada in three at the moment. Germany trying to move up on the outside with Verena Veit, uh, not making too much ground at the moment, but still Melling hasn't managed to shake off the chasers. This is going to be very, very tight. Kylin of Switzerland back in three. I think that's Albrecht of Norway back in six at the moment as they round the final sharp corner. And for the first time, the Emla of Finland makes a move and steals a march on Melling of Norway, who's back on that inside track. It served her well so far, and she's been good over the closing stages. But watch out for Sonia Smith on the far side. When she gets that free skating going, she may well be able to move up into the gold medal position. Here she comes. She's closing the gap on Melling, and Canada coming through into first place. Sonia Smith's got the lead at the moment 20 meters to go and Canada are going to take a gold medal how about that she's beaten all the favorites Melling pushed down a bronze Niemela of Finland in silver but it's Sonia Schmidt who has sprung the surprise of the meet so far qualified in 29 fractions of a second from being knocked out of the contest she skates away into the gold medal position how about that for Canada? It's all been about the USA on the World Cup Tour with Jess Diggins doing so, so well. But suddenly the Canadians have a star in the making and Sonia Schmidt has stolen the under-23 gold in the women's sprint event. Sensational. I think that smile is going to be there for a week. Absolutely incredible. Where did she come from? Absolutely brilliant performance from her. She won the first round. She won the second, the semi-final. And uh, having qualified in 29, was that a tactic? Well, I hope when we see her interviewed, I hope we get an interview with her. She tells us exactly what happened in qualifying. Well, let's have a look. Um, the black and red of the Canadian suit. There is a bit of white in there as well. Uh, but she's down in around fifth, coming down the first hill. No panic. On the outside, just makes sure. Still sitting there comfortably. She was down in fifth at the halfway stage. And then as we come up under the bridge, she moves up behind Melling. Very, very wise move. 
Schmidt at this stage in third. This is the final climb up into the finishing straight. Melling leading, Niemela of Finland in two, and Schmidt back in three. Takes a tight line on the inside, and then finds a little bit of space on the left-hand side. We missed the crucial bit because it's the free skating that won her the race. With 80 metres to go, she drops into the free skate, doesn't use the poles. She gets much lower, much more aerodynamic than the rest of the competitors. And that is what made the difference. Great racing. Well, that's a bit much to ask them to do a, a leap after all that, especially the two who get the silver and the bronze. Uh, Melling will be very, very disappointed not to have taken the gold there, having qualified in first. She's a foot taller, a foot taller than Sonia Schmidt. Schmidt has stolen the show. Here she is. U23 World Champion, congratulations. How does it feel? It feels pretty amazing. <laughs> did you expect this result? No, not at all. How did the race go for you? It was good. I feel like I stayed calm in the beginning and trusted my skis and then attacked where I had to. Very good, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> well, well done to Sonia Schmidt, 21-year-old, uh, and uh, she is the under-23 world champion. Just having a look at some of her results, she's been winning Continental Cups in Canada, which are way, way below the standard of the FIS races in Europe. We did see her in GOMS. Uh, nothing massively impressive, to be honest, sort of generally around the 40s to 50s uh, in terms of World Cup racing. There was nothing, nothing to indicate that she was going to walk away with this one and steal the under-23 world title. Uh, she did, uh, she produced a decent uh, result in the world, the national champions, Canadian national championships last year. That was in Thunder Bay, where I think the world, uh, when were the world championships in Thunder Bay? Was it 85 or was it 95? It might have been 1985. Um, a long time ago. Either way, it was a long time ago. But uh, Schmidt there finished third in qualifying. I really wanted to know what that qualifying run was all about. Down in 29th position, was it tactical or was she just lucky? Either way, she saved some energy. And this is where she did some really good work because she was squeezed out by the fin. She found the line she wanted on the inside, but she had to give away a lot of speed to achieve that. And again, we watched the finish. It's that 100 metres to 50, where the race was won. She was down in third, and she was three metres down on Melling, going into that last 120-metre stretch. Amazing. Great news for the Canadian team. What a boost. We'll have a look at the rest of the team's faces. Can they believe it? To be honest, I think Sonia Schmidt is still in shock after that one. And uh, quite incredible. That was a really, really gutsy performance. And I think the big thing is she believed it was possible. Of course, she's surprised, but she didn't set out to finish third or fourth or fifth. She set out on that final run to win. That looks like mum in the background. What a way to start your world championships. 36th last year in Whistler. Um, yeah, she was 36th in the, uh, in the qualifying, so she didn't qualify. This time she did just, just, but she has walked away with the world title. That is fantastic. So let's hope we're in for a surprise in the men's final, which is the next race coming up. Well, she could be pipped because in the men's final, we have the last qualifier, Rousset, qualified in 30.
Is he going to be able to do what Sonny Schmidt has just done in the women's? I think it is unlikely. Holmbo again is the man to beat. Jensen probably the most likely to give him a run for his money. And Emil Danielson of Sweden is a class act as well. But uh, it's going to be a fascinating run. Rousset and Hagenbusch uh, of France and USA, respectively, both look tired. There is Hagenbusch, really good in the first round. Uh, he won the first, uh, he won his heat, which was the third heat in 2.16.45. He'll need to go quicker than that to win the final. Matt William Jensen. I don't have any doubt that he is going to be a regular fixture on the World Cup pretty soon. Gaspar Rousset. Well, it's been a, a rocky route to the final. Third in the first semi. He comes through as a lucky loser. PTA second in the second semi. Less rest. He's had less rest than many. Emil Danielson, a 2.15.58 in the semi. He did a 2.15.48 in the first round. He's been pushing hard all the way through. And Alexander Holmbo, he won heat one. He won semi-final one. He won the qualifying. Is he going to round off the perfect day by winning the final? So one is Holmbo of Norway. Nine is Jensen. Danielson of Sweden, 14. PTA of Switzerland, 21. Rousset of France, 30. And Hagenbusch of USA wearing number six. Uh, you'll, know the, uh, you'll know the Swiss and the Norwegian suits. They're all pretty similar, but the Swiss suits with the grey arms as opposed to red. Uh, so the two Norwegians taking the lead in the early stages. They've both got the same headbands. They're both the same height. It's not going to be able to be easy to pick those out as we go round. Uh, Sweden with Danielson in third position at the moment. Danielson there wearing 14. And uh, number 30 is uh, Gaspar Rousset. And already Hagenbusch looking a little bit bushed at the back. Is this a tactic? It may well be. We've seen him try it before. He was a little lucky. He came through semi-final number one on the basis of his time, a 2.16.08 needs to be right up the front if he's thinking of medals he needs to be with the leaders do not give away any distance whatsoever as they go under the road bridge you want to be able to feel the breath of the man in front that's a good drive from Rousset he's going on the outside I have no doubt that Rousset will have been inspired by what he saw from Schmidt of Canada in the women's final qualifying 29 coming home or going home with that gold medal it's still number one Holmbo who holds uh, the best position at the moment but there's another injection of speed from Rousset he has worked so hard to get up into second place but we still have 350 metres to go. Round that final left-hand turn. Carrying speed into the next uphill is important. A stumble from Holmbo just opened up the door a little bit for the others. But he regains his composure and starts to apply the pressure. The cadence is up for Holmbo. He's got top spot at the moment. And it looks as though Holmbo and Jensen are going to take one and two. It's all about the bronze medal. Who have we got in third position? Is it Rousset or is it Hagenbusch? It's Hagenbusch who's come through. So more success for North America. Hagenbusch takes the bronze. He celebrates like it was a gold. And Rousset gave it everything. He gave it everything, but maybe gave a little bit too much before they reached the 800 metre mark. No problem for Holmbo, an absolute cruise for him. He was the class act in that field. He proved it from start to finish, winning qualifying, easy victory in his uh, first round, stormed the semi-final, and he wins the final in 2.15.78. Uh, he's got the speed, he's got the stamina, and is he your next Clebo? Well, he's got a long way to go to prove that, but he does look very, very strong. Jensen yet to recover. He was 0.14 of a second behind, but effectively he was well beaten. And there is uh, John Steele Hagenbusch. He's got himself a bronze medal. What a day for the North Americans.
Well, I must say, that is some of the best racing we've seen all year. Very, very tight racing. It's a really good course, isn't it? Really solid course. I love the technical corners. How many climbs in all? Uh, one, two, three, four sections of climbing. The last bit into the stadium isn't so steep that it kills you off, but it's certainly steep enough to, uh, if you've saved something, you can make a move, make a decisive move. So you have a good 120 metre climb up to the road bridge and then dropping down into the finish area, you get a little bit of assistance from the big G just enough to pick up the speed that is where the free skating won the day for Sonja Schmidt Hombo didn't need it he was comfortably clear never really under pressure in the perfect position from start to finish and uh, a well-deserved gold medal for him well yesterday we had uh, gold medals for Norway and Andorra Today, we've had gold medals for Norway again and Canada. Canada getting on the uh, medal table. Well done to them. We've got 41 nations here, incidentally. 42 nations. Uh, four, just about 450 athletes. 42 nations represented, uh, which is an amazing turnout. Yes, it will be uh, five or six nations that dominate. But already we've seen some surprising results. The Americans with two medals already. The Canadians have a gold and Dora have a gold. Norway, though, topping the um, medal table. And Norway with five medals from the first four races of these Junior World Championships. Here's the champion, Hombo. It feels amazing. Uh, I had very good skis today and uh, a great body, so I need to deliver today, so it was very good. Are you happy with the result? Yes, of course. Can you speak Norsk? Yes, it was good. It was a good job, so it felt really good today. Well, he's, uh, he's obviously been well trained on the skis. He's been <laughs> well trained by the media that say give away nothing. Uh, yeah, I've, I'm very happy. I've got good skis. We know that. Um, but I guess it's up to the interviewer to just press a little bit harder, find out something about the race and uh, find out where he won it. But uh, he looked confident from the start and uh, he's definitely the real deal. So Hombo is a new under 23 world champion. Uh, in terms of the men's, who's won that before? Well, Pellegrino has won it. Shanavar of France has won it. Eric Valness has won it twice. Uh, Ansgar Evanson was the champion last year and we've seen him making some impressive uh, performances in the World Cup this year. Did Clabo never win it? Well, he wasn't, uh, <laughs> he wasn't racing in 2012, uh, so I'm assuming not. That seems surprising. Well, great days racing. And um, the USA glad that they don't have to listen to the Canadians celebrating all day they have got themselves a bronze medal uh, to back up the silver that they got yesterday with Samantha Smith in the women's junior sprint there's your champion from the women's race a surprise definitely a pleasure to see undoubtedly absolutely fantastic Well, there was the position coming into the last uh, 120 metres. Melling ahead of Nia Mella. The last climb. And then again, missing out that crucial stage. I so want you to see the free skating that she did 
uh, with uh, 120 to go. And if you're a budding ski racer, it's something to watch out for. She is, she is, as I said, about a foot taller than Melling, who was the favorite to win the race. So she's low anyway. It's a really dynamic uh, position, but it's a strong, strong free skate. Something the Dutch are brilliant at when it comes to roller skiing. Let's have a look at the medalists from the men's event. Holmbo coming out on top. Jens and his teammate uh, in second place. And then John Steele Hagenbush of USA in third position. Easy win for Holmbo. Jensen looked as though he was on his last legs trying to hold off John Steele Hagenbusch and Gaspar Rousset, who was in the bronze medal position for 1,200 of the 1,250 metres, just edged out in the end. It's a cruel, cruel world. Uh, he faded badly over that last 50, ended up two, two seconds behind, and Hagenbusch sneaking in for the USA's second medal at these Junior World championships well what a day and uh, once again planitza providing some excellent racing in one of the most stunning sector settings in the world the only one that i think really compares is canmore which is where the uh, senior fis world cup is uh, off to this week some of the athletes already there ready for the for the racing but it's um a stunning part of the world here in Slovenia. There's a, a bit of natural snow around, but not a lot. Uh, and credit to the organization because they have worked tirelessly to get the snow laid down and the tracks into the condition required for a world championship event. So we'll leave it there with uh, news that uh, Holmbo of Norway is the men's under 23 world champion. A time of 2.15.78 to finish ahead of Jensen of Norway and Hagen Busch of uh, USA. And in the women's event, Sonja Schmidt coming through to take the win. Niemela of Finland too. Melling pushed down into third place. But Sonja Schmidt delighted. She gets Canada a gold medal on day two of the Junior World Championships. Congratulations to her.